Hello, this is Texas PK, and welcome to another installment of Noobstone, where we take a simplified look at how redstone components work, so where it's not only easier to build, but understand different redstone contraptions. Today we'll be taking a look at Trident Killers. These are really important if you plan on having any sort of mob farm in your world, as they help apply the looting effect to our mob farms, which make them more effective and make mob farms a viable option in Bedrock Edition. I also have three different versions of the Trident Killer, an early game one that doesn't use any observers, and then two mid to late game ones that do use observers. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you exactly how they work. So the first thing we want to do in building a Trident Killer is to put in our collection system. So the first step is to put in a double chest here, come around to the back side of it, and crouch place a hopper into that. Then come in and place some rails uh, on top of it and to the side so that the rail is turned in a corner shape like that. Then remove these rails and replace all of this area with solid blocks. Come around to this side, place your minecart with hopper, then come down here and remove that rail. When you do it, it flips around 90 degrees, but it's still in the perfect position. You'll notice that it's at an angle to where it's covering the center of this 2x2 two two square, so that any items that are being pushed around on top of these blocks will be pulled in by the minecart with hopper and fed in through the hopper below it and then into the double chest below there. Then we need to come in and put a upside down stair above our chest so we can still access it. And then come and put a solid block here and here. And then fill in this entire top area with solid blocks. And this is your basic collection system. And we'll be using it for all three versions of our trident killers that we'll be building today. The next step is to come in and place our pistons and you can either go on the second or the third one. Uh, I prefer to do the third one. But then once you place it, go and place it in the same position on each of the four sides. So if you start on the third spot, go to the third spot on the second side, the third spot on the third side, and again the third spot on the final side. Then come in and place solid blocks to complete the wall all the way around. Now in the last spot, we're going to place a slab right here. This will be where the XP orbs are able to be pulled out by the user. Next, we want to come back and replace this with this stair pointing like this. We're putting the stair here so we can waterlog it later along with a couple of the pistons, so that if we use an impaling trident, it will speed up the kill time of our trident killer. If you don't plan on using impaling enchantments on your trident, you can skip this and leave a solid block instead. Then come and place another layer of solid blocks across the top, all the way around. You will raise this wall up as high as you want. Uh, if you're attaching it to a mob farm up above it, just extend it all the way until it reaches the output from the mob farm. That's the basic structure for the Trident Killer's mechanism, but now we need to put in the control system. To do that, we come and place solid blocks and a ring one block below where our pistons are, all the way around. Then place a solid block behind each of the pistons. And then, coming off of this corner, place solid blocks to this point here. And then we need to come in with some repeaters. And some redstone dust and, and other redstone components. So let's get those ready. What we're going to do is create a cycle that will follow all the way around the outside of the perimeter of this trident killer and have it be to where the signal is delayed and creates a chase pattern all the way around the end. So we place a repeater here on 
two ticks, a repeater here on one, a repeater here on two ticks, a repeater here on one, two ticks, one tick, two ticks, and then finally one tick. Then come and place redstone dust in all the spaces that were left open. Now that this is in place, we need to be able to activate it. In theory, you could just place a lever right here and just quickly turn it off and on. It will create a chase pattern. But we want to be able to make it more easily turned off and on. So the way we will do that is by placing on this spot right here a solid block. Remove this block. Put a piston facing upward right here and a gravity block on top of it. If you don't want to use a standard piston with a gravity block, you can always use a sticky piston and then any other solid block that you'd like. Place a repeater here, a piece of redstone dust right there, and then you can put your lever on the end. Then we need to place some solid blocks coming off of this lever and have it follow all the way around to the back side of our trident killer. Remove this piece of redstone dust in this block. Come down here. Place a piston facing upward. Again, another gravity block. And then a redstone torch off of this block. And connect this to our lever with some redstone dust. So this is basically a simple rising edge monostable circuit. So what will happen is that when we turn this lever on, it will cause this piston to activate and the gravity block will be pushed up. So it'll only have time for a very short redstone pulse to be sent through this repeater. It will then activate the cycle of our pulse. At the same time, when that lever is turned on, it will activate this block, which will toggle the redstone torch off, causing this piston to fall and completing the circuit. When we want to turn off the Trident Killer, when we all you have to do is turn off this lever. It will then cause this redstone torch to be activated. The piston will be extended and it will break the circuit and thus stop our Trident Killer. Let's demonstrate that. And this is what an early game Trident Killer looks like. And as you see, when you flick the lever, it deactivates the circuit. Now, if you plan on using impaling on your trident, you need to come in and waterlog this step, this piston, and this piston. And if you have a trident with the impaling enchantment on it, it will then be able to kill the mobs faster. I'm just going to throw in a standard trident. But as long as you have one with an impaling, it will work faster. Now you can go with just one trident, or you can throw in two. If you have them, go ahead and do it. Throw in two. It'll make it kill the mobs faster. Then we're going to go ahead and demonstrate how this works. I'm going to go ahead and put in my favorite mob to kill in these, which is the creeper. And I'll just go ahead and put five of those in this thing. So let's go ahead and turn it on and watch these creepers get ground up by our trident killer. If you stand here, all of the XP orbs will be absorbed through that slot. If you want to increase your output from this farm, you just go ahead and use a looting sword as this is running, and whoever threw the trident will get the looting effect when the mobs are killed.
From those five creepers, you see that we collected eight gunpowder. It would have been even higher if we had looting three sword in our hand while this is running, which I highly recommend if you have it available. So, not bad. Especially for an early game, Trident Killer. But there are better versions of it if you are mid to late game and you've gone to the nether. We have better ways to build this Trident Killer. Let me show you how to do the mid to late game Trident Killer. The mid to late game Trident Killer can be built to operate at two different speeds. There's basically two versions, one that uses either Redstone Torch or Redstone Dust, or one that uses a dropper or a powered rail. The one that uses the Redstone Dust and Redstone Torch operate at 50 cycles per minute, roughly, whereas the one that uses the dropper or a powered rail operates at 70 cycles per minute. So this one operates slightly faster than this one. The reason you might want to use a slower one over the faster one is that spiders tend to get bumped out of the Trident Killer more often using the faster version, whereas the slower one allows the spiders to fall down into the path of the tridents. So it works better for spiders. All the rest of the mobs, pretty much, you're better off using the faster version. So depending on what farm you're using it on will determine which version to use. Let's go ahead and do the slower one first, and I'm going to use redstone dust, but you could use either redstone dust or a torch, whichever one you like. They operate at the same speed. So just like on the early game one, we start with our pistons in the same kind of rotating pattern all the way around. Then we come in with solid blocks and complete the wall and finish it off with the slab so you can have the XP pulled through this spot here. If you're going to use an impaling trident, remove this block and put in a stair. But this time, instead of putting a solid block behind our pistons, we're going to put in a button. You could put a solid block if you want, but I prefer to use a button. It makes it a little less unsightly. Of course, if you're putting this underground or somewhere where it has blocks all the way around the edge, solid blocks work just fine. The reason we do this is that when you waterlog your piston, if you don't have a button or a solid block blocking it, it will come out the backside and flood your area. So waterlog that piston, that step, and then this piston, the same way we did in the first one. Then we're going to come in and take observers and have them facing the corner blocks to where the output points to the block that will be on top of our pistons. Place one on each side facing each corner. Then come back with solid blocks and place them on top of each piston. and then place our redstone dust in each of the corners. And you see as we complete, it creates the cycle. Now to have an on-off switch for this, take your lever and you can either place it on this block or on this block. Either one will work. That turns it off. But so does that. The only downside to this is that when it's turned off, you will have a piston extended right here and it will stay that way until you turn on your Trident Killer. I'm going to go ahead and add another layer of blocks here just to help enclose it a little better. As this one moves faster, it tends to bump our mobs out a little bit more. You'll notice I went ahead and got myself a Looting 3 sword and an Impaling 5 Trident just to sh demonstrate how much more you get from using these two enchanted items. So let's go ahead and throw in a couple tritons, just like we had in the first one. And then we'll go ahead and spawn in five creepers as well. Then go to the looting sword and turn on the trident killer. You can see the impaling makes a huge difference in how quickly it kills our mobs. You can come up here and click the XP. Just make sure you don't accidentally grab the trident. And if we come down here and check our t chest, we see that we got 12 gunpowder instead of 8 like we did the first time. So looting has a significant impact on the output of our trident killer. 
that amount will vary. Sometimes it'll be less, sometimes it'll be more, but that's a pretty good number to expect when you use Looting 3 with the Triton Killer. Let's go ahead and see the faster version of the Triton Killer. Now just like the other ones, we start with our pistons and put them in that same pattern around the sides. And then come in with the solid blocks. And the slab right here. Since we'll be using impaling, we'll go ahead and put in the step to water log. Put a button on the back of each piston. Then come in and place our observers facing the corners. Put solid blocks behind each of the observers on top of each piston. And then you can either use a powered rail or a dropper. I personally prefer the dropper but you can use whichever one you want. I think the solid block looks better and it also helps prevent mobs from glitching through the wall, which can happen on occasion. Place one into each corner like this. If you don't want the face pointing outward, you can always do it by coming like this and you won't be able to see the face on any of the sides. And you can see already that moves a lot faster than the other version. To turn this offer on, all you have to do is put the lever onto one of the droppers. Of course, you'll have to crouch place it. And when you turn it off, you hear that it stops it. Now, the advantage to using the dropper over any of the other components is that it does not leave our piston extended. They'll all be fully retracted. And while that's not really that important, I kind of like it. It looks better, and my OCD is made happy when all the pistons are retracted. But whichever way you want works just fine. Let's go ahead and waterlog the step, the piston, and the second piston. And again, we're going to use the looting sword, the trident, and the creeper. Oh, before we forget, let's go ahead and add an extra layer of blocks as well, just to make sure they don't accidentally get bumped out with the faster speed of our Trident Killer. And then we can go ahead and throw in the Trident with impaling on it. Drop in Again, the same number of creepers for a total of five. Switch to our looting sword and turn on the Trident Killer. And you can see that is even faster than the second version. To collect the XP, just come up near the edge. And this time only nine, but still more than eight. But like I said, with looting 3, it is random. It can be anywhere from 8 all the way up to, I believe, as many as 12 or 13. At least in my experience, that's been the range that I have found. And that is the faster version of the mid to late game Triton Killer. And which one you use will depend on where you are in the game and which mobs you're wanting to kill. A couple important notes for this Triton Killer is that if you find that you have mobs glitching through the walls, it can happen. All you have to do is just make sure you put an extra layer of blocks around all sides. Also, if you're using this to kill spiders, you might want to line the walls of the Trident Killer with magma blocks, as spiders don't like to climb these and it'll keep them from climbing up the walls and escaping the Tridents. But that being said, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it helps you out and you can put it to use somewhere in your world. If it has, I'd greatly appreciate it if you leave a comment down below letting us know how you used it. And on that note, I'd like to say thanks for watching and I hope to see you again in the next one. But until then, this is Texas PK. Be good to each other. Bye!